Welcome to the CADFIM ANSYS tutorials. In presentation number 16, we shall be looking at how to use ANSYS Workbench to calculate a transient temperature distribution, i.e. a temperature that varies over time. And we shall also look at the resultant thermal stress. The example we shall be using is a finned pipe as found in heat exchangers. It's a steel pipe with a rolled-on finned aluminium sheath, and our aim is to calculate the temperatures and stress on a small section or segment. As always, we begin the analysis with the geometry using Workbench Manager, linking the transient thermal analysis with the imported geometry. We define the material properties. In addition to steel, we require aluminium. And once we've done that, we edit the thermal model. We now assign the two components assigning steel, the default material, to the steel inner pipe and aluminium to the finned outer pipe. We define a bonded contact between these two components on the assumption that there's a firm connection across the surface array. The next step is to define the mesh thickness for both components as 0.2 millimeters so let's display the mesh and finally let's define the thermal boundary conditions. We'll assume that water passes the inner surface at 90 degrees and that air expels the energy via forced convection in the outer region where the fins are located. So here we enter a convection energy boundary condition using a typical value for flowing water in a pipe flow, 4000 watts per square meter Kelvin. We change to the correct system of units, 4000 watts per square meter Kelvin, and we enter a temperature of 90 degrees. Turning to the outer region, we select the corresponding surfaces, and we also select all the attached tangential parts so as to ensure we select all the corresponding surfaces and we define a convection of 20 watts per square meter Kelvin with respect to the surrounding air within this region. After that, we specify the time frame for the whole calculation, which will be 100 seconds, or around one and a half minutes, and then we start the analysis. Once the analysis is complete, the temperature, the time, and the heat flux density can be portrayed. For example, we can see in the case of the temperature that after about 30 to 40 seconds it's settled at its final level, with the temperature distribution apparently amounting to between 79 and 84 degrees. Eighty-four degrees on the inner side, and seventy-nine or eighty degrees on the outer side of the fins. Let's take a look at the heat flux density we see that there's a particularly high heat flux density in the area where the fins begin, i.e. at the transition between the pipe and the fins. The fins have a very large surface area, allowing a lot of energy to be discharged. There's a bottleneck, a high heat flux density, at the exact point where the fins begin, meaning it's difficult for the gamma energy to enter the large surface area of the rib. You could improve the heat dissipation in this region by thickening this part of the fin somewhat. In order to calculate the resultant thermal expansion and thermal stress based on temperature, temperature distribution, and the material mix, we change over to Workbench Project Manager and link the static analysis with the transient temperature value analysis that's just been performed. We edit the mechanical boundary conditions by determining where symmetry is found. In mechanics, symmetry refers to the absence of deformation perpendicular to the surface equating to a frictionless support. We assume from this that the pipe can move freely in a longitudinal direction. It's only a representative section in terms of length. The ends should be free so that boundary effects can be taken into account. Then to finish off, we need to specify the time-dependent boundary conditions with respect to the stress calculation. The default is end time 
which relates to the final time increment of the thermal transient analysis. However, this could be any other time-dependent boundary condition. We stay in this configuration and restart the analysis. And after the mechanical analysis, we calculate deformation and stress. Firstly, let's look at the deformation. We can see a casting boundary effect. In order to see this more clearly, we can display the geometry in its non-deformed state. And we can see that there's a radial expansion and an axial movement. At the end, due to the boundary effect, we see everything tilting so as to produce a slight plate-shaped deformation of the outer fin. With respect to the stress, we're looking at about 90 megapascals in the inner region of the pipe. As you can see, what ANSYS Workbench Shared Platform enables you to do is to perform a simple thermal and mechanical analysis through use of a link.